So what is web 3.0 and how can you earn money from it? Today I'll talk about the five different ways I've thought of of how you'll be able to make money inside web 3.0 but first we're gonna start with what actually is web 3.0 and then we'll later explore Greater economy jobs, DeFi based hedge funds, integration apps, DeFi staking and Shopify for decentralized applications. Yeah, there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. First of all, I've seen so many videos on Web 3.0 where no one really explains it simply so that everybody can understand it, even the people who are not into crypto. If you're into crypto and you've been using the Brave browser, you're already on Web 3.0, right? Now for the people who aren't in crypto, let me explain it in the most simple terms possible. Web 3.0 is any blockchain application. That's it. That's all it is. Now obviously it's a little bit more complicated than that, but if you look at it from the base point of what it is, it's blockchain applications. Now to quickly point out the difference between Web 1, Web 2 and Web 3, Web 1 was basically way back in the day when the internet was just born. All you could do was read and that's everything. They wanted to bring the book format into the digital format and all you could do on the web was read pages and that's it. Web 2.0 on the other hand, Web 2.0 on the other hand is the era of Mark Zuckerberg uh, Facebook, basically MySpace was Web 2.0 as well and really all those applications and websites that earn money off of your attention. Now why is that a problem? Well, their services are completely free. So they earn money by having your attention and then presenting you certain ads. Now that business model is not bad in of itself if they weren't selling your data to advertisers so that it's easier for them to pinpoint which person wants to buy a purse and which person wants to buy let's say a lamp or a TV but basically on your phone the apps like Facebook Instagram they follow you they know where you are they know where you eat they know where you go out they know who you hang out with and with that they know which ads to place for you that is their business model and that is how they earn money it's all about money isn't it now let's take a web 3.0 application for an example and we have here the brave browser now what's the difference between the brave browser and Google Chrome or Mozilla well brave browser operates on the blockchain they have an ad blocker installed so you're not gonna see any ads on the brave browser except the ads you allow now why would you allow ads at all well on web 3.0 you get paid for watching ads so yes just a few days ago so just a few days ago I claimed my 50 bat tokens from watching the ads on the brave browser so they do have their own coin and they have way more behind the curtains and behind the scenes of how they operate and what their bat token can be used for like donating to people who already use the brave browser for example if you use the brave browser you're getting rewards in the bat token so the basic attention token you could then have a pop-up on screen up above there above this video and you can send me a tip in the bat token and I would receive it since I'm also a bat creator now that brings me to my first point creator economy jobs and basically there's so many alternatives to what we're using right now that are on blockchain or basically web 3.0 so we have library or Odyssey as they call themselves nowadays Odyssey or library is an alternative to YouTube where you can upload videos and literally get paid just for uploading them or if you're a viewer of videos you you're gonna get paid in the library tokens when you watch things on their platform so similarly to crypto games or nft games they have their own business model inside of their metaverse so it's it's not really a metaverse but it's a whole economy inside of one application other than doing videos if you're not one to do videos you don't have to obviously but there's so many opportunities for videos you could do you can make compilations of things you can make compilations of funny moments you can make compilations of fail moments um, none of that right now is available on library well it might be I've just not searched thoroughly enough but either way it's not as bad as YouTube so there's not so many people doing it so you could still prosper in doing a channel like that and still get paid in their library token which I tried to claim and you can claim them to an exchange where you can convert them into dollars and then from there you can just send those dollars wherever you want to your wallet and then to into cash if that's what you want so there's also websites like Leo finance that allow you to 
write articles and earn money for every view you get, every read you get on your article. So if you're an up and coming writer or a writer at all who wants to try out Web 3.0, Leo Finance might be the place to go. And here's my article and how much I earned from this number of viewers. And I'm just saying it like this without any telling you any numbers because I didn't know right now, but I'll just put it on screen later so you're gonna be able to see that. DeFi based hedge funds or AMCs. So normally hedge funds deal with very high net worth individuals and AMCs mostly deal with retail investors like you and me. So for example, let's say I get my monthly salary and I go to an AMC and the fund manager says, okay, thank you for giving me $1,000. Then he would go out and buy a bunch of stocks with your $1,000 and in the middle of it, he would take a commission for him. So basically the same model as hedge funds, but on a smaller scale since it's mostly for retail investors. But basically both hedge funds and AMCs thrive on commissions. Without commissions, they don't have anything. It's their bread and butter. So if you're paying them $1,000 and they're not charging any commissions, they're not making any money. So now DeFi based AMCs have the power to bring those commissions down by a lot, a lot. Now, if you're new to the crypto space, DeFi means decentralized finance. So what does it mean bringing the commissions down by a lot? Well, well, the transactions on the blockchain are getting easier and easier. And as time goes on, they're getting less time consuming and the fees are getting smaller and smaller. Not to get too techy on you, but the bigger a block size is on a certain blockchain network, the more transactions they can put through in one second. The more transactions they can put through in one second, the cheaper the fees are basically. But then again, if the blockchain is not used a lot, the fees are gonna be cheap either way. So as Ethereum moves to proof of stake or Ethereum 2.0, if you will, just the fees on the Ethereum network are gonna go down by a long shot. Now the fees on Cardano are very cheap. The fees on Solana are very cheap. And all those networks are blockchain networks where people can build decentralized applications on or any decentralized finance type application really so amc's hedge funds a new youtube a new twitter a new instagram anything can be built on those networks and there's a lot more networks out there where you can build as well so with time the transaction or the flow of money will be so smooth that the commissions will be reduced by quite a lot so as a result the fund managers for AMCs and hedge funds who are experimenting with uh, DeFi AMCs and DeFi hedge funds will be able to offer their work at a very, very low commission rate. And basically this becomes a very potent business model. Now you may say things like this are super complex. How can I get a job in there? How? What can I do? Well, number one, you must learn more about decentralized finance or DeFi, or you could become a content writer because a lot of AMC based businesses and a lot of fintech based businesses, they're trying to create their content curation strategy. So you will keep on seeing jobs like this more and more as time goes on and all these jobs will be super high paying jobs. That's for sure. So better start right now and develop your knowledge about blockchain, cryptocurrency and the DeFi space as a whole. It's time for the next gen finance guys. Now, what are integration apps? That's my next talking point. So let's pick a very specific example here to explain what this is. So many of us work at major companies, at big, huge companies. And when we wanna apply abroad, we need a letter of recommendation. Mostly everyone needs a letter of recommendation to apply for a new job. It's kind of mandatory at this point, but do you get it? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, it's, it's really difficult to say. You go to your boss, and you ask for a letter of recommendation and he says this is not the company policy but you know for a fee i could issue it for you and that's the problem right that's something that should be free and you getting your detailed performance review should be mandatory to you getting it but since the companies are centralized they can do whatever they want they can say i don't want to give it to you and that's it and you can't get it the web 3.0 answer for this again is the blockchain because on the blockchain everything is, is transparent so anything you would do on the blockchain any transaction you would write on the blockchain is there forever and you would have your own specific wallet with let's say metamask which is a web 3.0 wallet of the future that everybody's been using for years now so you've been using web 3.0 without even knowing it's web 3.0 that's why i'm saying a lot of people say uh, web 3.0 this new thing and this and that it's not new right only the new ideas are new the concept of web 3.0 has been out there for a while and all of us have been using a lot of 
dApps and a lot of Web 3.0 applications for quite a while. So dApps solve this problem. So what are dApps? Well, basically decentralized applications or dApps. But this problem also exists in education or on your medical records, where some doctors would refuse to give your medical records to another hospital, which is totally insane, but they can do it since they're centralized. Now, imagine if a hospital was ran by a DAO, or if, if a hospital was a DAO, a decentralized, a decentralized autonomous organization working on the blockchain where everything you do is really written on the blockchain. All that the other hospital would need to do is look it up on the blockchain and it's right there, right? Linked to your wallet or your address is everything they would need. Or maybe that's a bad example. Maybe maybe your medical record shouldn't be out there on the blockchain, but what you could do, do is make your medical record into an NFT and then you can just give access to your medical record to whoever you want and the hospital can't say I'm not gonna give it to you because you are the owner of said medical record because it's an NFT and you can make it not viewable so only you can view it and then if someone else needs access you can just write their wallet address and this wallet can then read what's on the NFT or basically what is your medical record. So that's one of the ways that Web 3.0 can really help in that regard. So going back to MetaMask, MetaMask is basically one of the most famous wallets out there and it acts like a central repository for all the NFTs that you buy and sell and all the crypto that you hold, buy or swap. Or really any decentralized finance assets you will ever own are written inside of your MetaMask wallet and you're gonna be able to view it. Actually, anyone is gonna be able to view it, but they can't know that it's you. It's impossible to know whose wallet it is, but it is possible to look it up if you have a certain address. So for example, you wanna look up your wallet's history, you would go to Etherscan, type in your wallet address, and you, you'll be able to see everything you've been doing on said wallet, so everything that address has been doing. So from buying and selling the NFTs, to swapping the crypto, to uh, staking and yield farming and everything you've been doing, and that's just the things we have right now. Just imagine all the things that are to come for Web 3.0, for MetaMask, and for the blockchain as a whole. So it's a very simple idea, it's the wallet you carry everywhere you go in the crypto world or in the Web 3.0 world. So similar ideas will be built out in the field of healthcare, employment, in the field of HR, and a bunch of other fields by using the concept of dApps. So if you're trying to start a business, you can literally start an integration business by using the concept of dApps. Now obviously there's a lot more to talk about than this, and <laughs> really a lot more to say, but we have two more talking points points and I've already been recording this video for almost an hour so I need to kind of wrap it up a little bit faster. I said we have a lot of time but I've been rambling and rambling so let's cut to the chase. We're talking about DeFi staking this time. Now one of the most exciting ideas for me is DeFi staking where you can stake your crypto. Right now DeFi staking is not the easiest thing to do in the world and let me actually start uh, with this talking point. So with Robinhood. What Robinhood did in the United States is it made it easy for retail investors to buy and sell stocks. Similarly, an idea or really a dApp, a decentralized application that is also DeFi, so decentralized finance, so a DeFi dApp, if you will, that will allow retail users to easily stake their crypto is gonna come a long way. So once DeFi becomes easy to use, it will gain a lot of fraction. So what is possible right now, for example, is for you to buy some Ethereum, then you lock it up in a smart contract protocol and you earn 7.5% annually of just having your crypto there is staked inside of that decentralized finance protocol. Obviously, there's already a lot of dApps who do this, a lot of dApps where you can stake, a lot of dApps where you can yield farm, and yield farming is something I want to talk about in a whole different video. I don't, wanna, don't even want to touch it in, in this one. Actually, I do want to touch it a little bit um, and say in the most simple terms I can, uh, basically yield farming is providing liquidity for a decentralized uh, trading platform because they don't work with banks, so they need liquidity, and as a retail user, you can offer that liquidity for a very high percent return. But more of that in a future video, in case you guys wanna see um, a little more detailed video about Yield Farm. But as I said, I don't have a lot of time, so I wanna move on to talking point number five, which is Shopify for dApps. Now, most of you, I would guess, already know what Shopify is, but it's simply, it's a marketplace for entrepreneurs. So rather than starting a small business from scratch, then trying to build a website for it, then doing all, all the marketing myself and all learning how to automate sales with 
a script, I need to learn how to code. All of that is super complicated and what Shopify does is it acts like a mega mall where I can show and display my business and basically they solve all these problems for me with integrated applications and this and that. So in return they obviously keep a small commission of my sales which is genius. If you think about it, it's genius. And also Shopify is not free. You do need to pay, pay monthly in order to use it. As a creator, obviously. So if you're creating any dApps, especially if you're a very small entrepreneur and you can't afford to go out and hire 10 blockchain developers, a team of marketing people and a team of content writers, a DeFi Shopify would be very, very useful for you. So the first one to go out and make a DeFi Shopify is gonna profit very well and obviously all the people that are gonna use it are also gonna profit very, very well from it. And as a side note, if you wanna find jobs, real jobs inside Web 3.0, you really need to develop um, <laughs> your developing skill. So being a developer you or, or you need to work on your content creation, so either video or article form, so in writing. Either way, you must work a lot, you must work on yourself and your skills in order to do any sort of job in Web 3.0, obviously. Well, that is except for the metaverse, and I have so many videos on the metaverse and how to make job, uh, how to make jobs, I mean how to make money inside of the metaverse that I didn't even want to touch it in this video. So these are all great opportunities in the crypto space, and blockchain firms right now are paying insane amounts of money each year to their employees. So hope you get on that bandwagon and start earning some money to invest in some crypto and you know, that's, that's how it goes, that's how it goes. Other than that, thank you for watching this video, I'll see you tomorrow for my next one. Until then, my name is The Inspector, peace.